morning. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Some of us have been attempting to follow uh, the development of black movements in Brazil for, for many, many years, for decades. Uh, um, and more recently, um, personally, I've had the opportunity to visit Brazil on numerous occasions, primarily in Bahia, primarily to um, teach courses around black feminism. Um, I think you're, you're, you're absolutely right uh, that uh, the sometimes exclusive focus on the U.S. with respect to uh, black movements um, prevents us from understanding uh, how important and, and, and how uh, vibrant uh, uh, black movements are in the country which, as you pointed out, has the largest black population outside of the, the continent. Uh, I am, have been very specifically interested in uh, black feminist movements in Brazil. I had the opportunity uh, to meet Lady Gonzalez in 19... I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was in the late 1980s uh, when she participated in a conference in, in the U.S. Uh, and, and my sense is that uh, in the U.S. we have a great deal to learn from movements here in Brazil. I pointed out on several occasions uh, that the uh, domestic workers movement uh, in, in Brazil uh, has a great deal to offer in terms of strategies and tactics to the movement in the U.S. I, I, I'm not sure whether you're aware of the fact that, that uh, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter uh, is a leader in the domestic workers movement in the U.S. Uh, and so I look forward to the kinds of exchanges which can um, allow for people in Brazil, as well as people in the U.S., to recognize how much Brazil has to offer. Uh, uh, the, the assumption often is that black feminism comes from the U.S. And, um, and my sense is that as I've said on several occasions, we have a great deal more to learn uh, from you in Brazil than people in Brazil have to learn from uh, the U.S. Uh, but of course, that is the, that is the consequence of the extent to which the U.S. tends to colonize uh, of the whole region in terms of ideas, in terms of movements. Uh, and we will continue to struggle against that. Well, um, first of all, in answer to the first part of your question, uh, uh, Brazil is a huge country. Sao Paulo is a huge city. And if I had attempted to do individual interviews uh, with individual journalists, which could have been extremely fascinating, um, we would probably have just um, been able to speak to a small fraction of the... I mean, I, I apologize uh, for... Um, not being able to stay long enough to do individual interviews, but I thought that that this would uh, be the best format to uh, try to speak to the press in Brazil and some of them, uh, you know. <coughs> the second part of the question. I think you, answered for me uh, when you suggested that I might not be willing to choose 
you know, one of those rubrics, um, anti-capitalist, anti-racist, um, uh, abolitionist, what else? Uh, feminist. Um, uh, oh yes, there are many more. Uh, uh, you know, what about the environment? You know, particularly since we're here in Brazil, and there's a lot of conversation about you know what is happening in the Amazon and the impact of uh, agro-business uh, uh, here in Brazil. Um, Anti-war, anti-militarist, uh, uh, I attempt to offer support to the movement of disabled people. I mean, I could actually go on and on. And I don't believe that it is helpful to select one and say that this is the most important arena of struggle at the expense of all of the others, but rather to recognize their interconnections and interrelationalities. Uh, 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 I, 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 I cannot um, effectively participate in a movement against racism without organizing the heteropatriarchal uh, dimension of racism. Uh, I cannot um, do good work as a feminist without acknowledging that, um, uh, that capitalism has played an important role in shaping the nature of the patriarchy as well as racism. Uh, so that many of us, in terms of capitalism, use the term racial capitalism. Because there's the assumption somehow that you can separate the struggle against capitalism from the struggle against racism and all of the others. Of, of course, um, the term that um, people tend to use these days is intersectionality. Um, uh, but even before that term was introduced into academic and popular discourse, there have been efforts including um, on the, by Lelia Gonzalez to try to think these issues together and to ask, you know, how, how can we not stand up against uh, racism as it is directed against black people without recognizing um, the uh, impact of colonization on indigenous people uh, without also recognizing that uh, generally the majority of the population uh, consists of, of, of women, uh, uh, without also recognizing that trans issues have, increased, have become increasingly important, not only with respect to um, supporting the rights of trans people, but by recognizing that trans communities, by drawing our attention to the structure of gender, of the binary structure of gender, have also allowed us to recognize that, um, that, that, that many of the problems that we confront emanate uh, uh, from that which we consider to be absolutely normal. And so how do we develop stances of, of uh, critique, critical stances? Uh, so yes, uh, um, I think your second alternative was the one that I would choose.